Market structure, one of the most important aspects of price action trading. And while it seems simple, most people get it wrong. So buckle up, because in the next 10 to 15 minutes, you're going to know everything you need to know to become a master of market structure. And stick around to the end because there's something waiting for you there that will take your learning to the next level. So what is market structure? It's just the way the market moves. Uptrends, consolidation, and downtrends. These are the three phases of market structure, and this is what they look like. The idea is we buy through uptrends, sell through downtrends, and stay out during consolidation. During a trending move, not consolidation moves, we get two phases, impulses and corrections. Impulse moves are pro-trend moves, and corrections are pullback moves. Why does this happen? Because the market is an auction. In an uptrend, for example, there will be points where buyers want to buy, but they're not happy paying the current price to actually buy that contract or asset. So buying slows in the short term, easing the market until it reaches a price that people are happy to pay. When a good buying price is met, people buy and the next impulse starts again. Quite simple, right? So why is it so hard to understand and what makes it difficult? Well, the first place people go wrong is in reading highs and lows incorrectly. To read structure, we look at higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, and lower lows. But because markets move across different time frames, sometimes we can get caught up looking at the wrong lows and the wrong highs. To avoid this, we want to view structure as waves. So instead of looking at every small up and down move, we want to look at structure in big phases, like this. This keeps you in tune with the overall trend direction instead of getting you lost in every small push. And this leads me on to the second point, substructure versus swing structure. The waves we just drew out are swing structure and the small moves that happen within are substructure. It is possible to take advantage of these smaller substructure moves as they are valid trends inside of the larger trend itself. We're gonna talk about this very soon. So let's have a go at mapping structure. For this example, we're going to GBPAUD on the one hour time frame. Now we can see we had a trend shift here, shifting us into an uptrend. Now we're going to map the swing structure. So in terms of the swing structure, we are seeing multiple breaks of structure, which are taking us to the upside. And we can also clearly see the market is making higher lows along the way. So this is clearly an uptrend. It's not a downtrend. Now, how exactly do we mark the swing structure? Are we going to consider every tiny little nuance in the trend? No, we are not. We are going to move with the bigger picture and view this as waves. So there we have wave one, that's the impulse. Wave two, that's a correction. Wave three is the next impulse. Wave four is the correction. Wave five is another impulse. Wave six is a correction. And then wave seven would lead us all the way up towards this point just here. Because this really is not too much of a viable breaker structure being just a wick. And this would actually signify the larger wave. So you've seen there how we mark out structure as a wave instead of actually trying to look at every single little move. Now, sometimes when I'm teaching someone, they come to me and when they're in their early days, they're actually looking at every single little movement like this and considering this is the larger trend direction and then getting confused because they're like, well, the market's changing direction every few seconds. How am I supposed to keep up with this? Well, in reality, we're not. We just want to move with the big picture. We don't need to worry about little candle movements like this and the intricacies of each small move. What we need to do is focus on that big picture. Picture. Remember earlier I mentioned the concept of substructure, the smaller trends inside of the larger trend? Well, we can actually trade these as their very own trends. So breaking down structure even further in this example, we can start to look for the smaller opportunities inside of the bigger move. So now working with the same piece of structure that we just looked at in that structure mapping example, we are going to look at the substructure and swing structure of the market. So let's mark on the swing structure. And now let's mark the substructure. So the swing structure is the impulse moves and the substructure is the correction moves, the pullbacks, okay? So as you can see, although the larger trend is bullish, we do see smaller bearish opportunities happening within. We can see that we have a valid downtrend actually happening inside of the correction. This is where we can take advantage of the substructure to take trades that are counter to the higher time frame swing trend, but entirely valid using a lower time frame. So for example, here inside the hourly, we could drop to the 15 minute and look for 15 minute bearish opportunities throughout this structure. So for the sake of example, I'm gonna dig into this movement here and show you where the substructure opportunity came in. Okay, so using this piece of price action, we can see we have the impulsive movement. This was the larger hourly move. And now we are looking for a corrective move. Now, of course, we do not want to execute upon any trades until the market sentiment has shifted. So being on the 15 minute, we would want to see a 15 minute break in structure, which would come at this level. Now, if we get that all good, we can go for a substructure move. If we don't get that, that's fine. We will just be continuing with a higher time frame swing structure. 
Now, as you can see, we've just broken the trend here by forming a lower low with a body closure. So what we could do now is look for opportunities to sell through this valid 15 minute trend. So why are we doing this if we know that the high time frame is bullish? Well, the reason for that is simply because we have a valid lower time frame trend. So this actually comes back to the fractal nature of the market. Now the market moves in a way where the same patterns are repeated across multiple time frames, and this is a great example of that. We can actually see a valid hourly trend, but we can also go and see a valid 15 minute trend, both of which may provide valid trades. Now, when you're taking a trade like this, because we're moving against the higher time frame, even though we're moving in a valid 15 minute trend here, we do want to make sure we are employing a break even strategy or trailing stops or doing something that will save us when the market doesn't reach our targets. Because obviously, if the high time frame trend is bullish, the high time frame trend has more weight. That means that we're not always going to get our targets filled, therefore meaning sometimes our trades may reverse after moving in profit. So we need to make sure we're protected from that. And in an ideal world, locking something in as well through trailing stops. So as you can see, this trade has now played out and we would have actually added here 3.5 R that we wouldn't have seen if we weren't using this substructure swing structure methodology. Now you could obviously refine this to your strategy or execute the trade however you want. The concept I'm trying to show you today is just the trend. So you can see that both the biggest swing structure and the smaller substructure can provide opportunities for trades. The hard part is differentiating what is swing structure and what is substructure. And the best way to do that is by looking at the market as waves. The next rule you should consider is how far you should look to take your substructure trades before taking profit. You shouldn't try to extend substructure moves past the highs or lows of the swing structure moves. So if we're in a swing uptrend and we are taking a substructure sell, we should look to take profits at or before the demand zone at the bottom of the swing structure move. This way we know if the market continues to move in the uptrending fashion, we are out of our sell move before we get destroyed. This way we capitalize on the whole pullback or correction, but we don't try to take the market too far and instead we keep moving with the larger swing trend. If you enjoyed that, hit the link in the description. That's going to take you to my free course where you can learn more about market structure, supply and demand, liquidity, macroeconomics and other core concepts that are going to tenfold your trading performance. Trading with the trend is the most secure way to make money in the markets and now that you're armed with the knowledge on how to do that, I suggest you go and backtest, build up a data set and then learn from your personal perception of the market. With that being said, don't procrastinate, don't waste time, get to work.